Hi and welcome. I'm Tom, your host, and this is the Dropcast Movie Poster Podcast. This format is part of the Instagram blog a Drop, and you can find us under at DropMakeOfficial. We do reviews, news, interviews that all have to do with the film business. Today we will have a chat with the great Scott C, who is not really an alternative movie poster artist per se, but he deals in pop culture art and makes even the most evil being from the screen so adorable. So stay tuned and head, out to, head over to our Instagram profile at DropMakeOfficial to follow along with the art we are talking about and check us out on YouTube for the video version. So now let's get started. Scott, welcome. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm, I'm doing fine, man. It's been a long day. Um, we are recording this on the day you uh, released your timed run for the Attack of the Block. And what else was it? Get Out. And the third one was? Uh, sorry to Bother You. Sorry to bother you. Exactly. Yeah. It, all great films. I, I really love those films. And um, yeah, this this was the release of that. And then there was the Mondo Jaws 40th anniversary release. And there was the Matt Ferguson uh, Empire Strikes Back uh, official release. They had a couple pre-sales uh, yesterday, I think it was. And it went totally mm -hmm. crazy. People, I already checked on online uh, on eBay. People were putting up the one of the variants for 560 euros. It's it's just mm. it's just crazy over there, but yeah, it's been a very busy day, <laughs> and um, yeah. yeah, to start our sh our show, I always pick a couple art pieces um, from from your artwork, and I wanted to talk about it. And the first one I picked because sure. I I wanted to try to stay in the movie realm, like which is not a movie poster per se, as I uh, already mentioned, but um, it's going to be uh, far away. Uh, the Faraway Galaxy that was released by Mondo, I think it was, right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And I put this piece up and it's a really cool one. H how did this happen? What, what's the story behind that? Um, I've been wanting to do a poster with Mondo for many, many mm -hmm. years. I've been buddies with them for so long. Uh, I, and and I, I was trying to do, I think, I started trying to do a Clash of the Titans poster many, many years ago. Mm -hmm. And then that uh, just, we just, I don't know why we didn't finish that one. But um I've been wanting to do a Star Wars one for a long time because I like doing these posters with uh, with all the characters in the movie because especially with these movies that are so important to us that we know, we know all of the background characters because mm -hmm. we know every line and whatever. Um, and Star Wars is one of those for me. So I've always wanted to do it and I wanted to do it. I thought that would be a good one to do with, uh, uh, with Mondo, make it like an official kind of yeah. license thing. And... Um, so I was I've been kind of working on that I, the idea of that and like, I went through and did the screenshots of like frame by frame mm -hmm. for the whole to get all the characters that exist in the movie. Mm -hmm. um, I did that about four years ago and started talking to them about it. But the process of approving it yeah, and yeah, stuff yeah. Through, Dis through Disney was was crazy just because I'm not used to that sort of thing. And then there's just a lot to look through. And so it's like the sort of thing where. You, you look through and you find kind of certain things that you really like. Mm -hmm. or, or Disney would find things that they would uh, they would say, oh, like every time they look, they find a new thing because it's just a lot to look at. Uh, the one, I would say the one thing, I'm sorry, I'm going along about it. It's do more. Go ahead. Guy, go ahead. It's, uh, it's all about you. There's one. Oh, no, it's about <laughs> I was about to look up. the conversation. But the um, there's one gag that was very early on they, um, they didn't want to have in it because I wanted every single character. And one mm -hmm. of the more memorable moments, of course, was when Ant, and Brew and like yeah. and Uncle Owen were singed, right? It was a really sad moment when you see their bodies. And so I wanted the singed versions of them hanging out with the normal versions mm -hmm. of them because there's different states. And they said, no, you can't have the burnt versions of them looking, standing there looking happy. But I was like, ah. Oh. So that was a gag that we had to get rid of. Okay. Me. But anyways, that's that's how it came about. I, it I mean, you you got to uh, hear, um, now I forgot the names, Dr. Everzan and uh, Ponda Baba. Like he, he got his arm cut off and is pretty happy about it. So. <laughs> Yeah, everyone's pretty happy about it. That's the kind of common thing with all of my art is everyone's pretty happy about it. Because this, this is after hours. This mm -hmm. is after like the, they've shot the movie, they've had a tough time. So everyone kind of is posing together like, oh, enjoying, enjoying their time together. Yeah. Um, so. how, um, how many, do, do you know how many characters you picked? Like who are in there? I haven't, count, I haven't counted. I think Rob counted I, I i haven't counted i'm not sure okay <laughs> and i certainly don't know all the names i don't know all the names of it there was a time when i know knew a lot of names i used to work for at lucas a long time ago okay, cool. and i was a huge fan and i wanted so i knew a lot of the names and now i just don't 
knows me. <laughs> I see. Great. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I studied up. I uh, when since I was a kid, and I was reading a lot of comics and like the canon, like the the non-canon stuff now. And so I like learned through the time. But uh, I, for some reason, I, I uh, the other day I was watching um, the uh, Schmodown movie trivia showdown. Have you heard of that? Yeah. Wait. Why the? Oh wait. Is that Tom? Sh is that Tom Schmo? Is that who's who does it? What? What is it's that? It's just Christian. That Christian. Sounds... Christian Harloff and Mar Mark Ellis, who who used to be at Collider, and they did it over at Collider, but had their own thing. But then they started like Sen Live, the Schmodown Entertainment Network, and they do this like movie trivia shows, like uh, basically like a wrestling meets like like a trivia showdown. And, uh, mm -hmm. and then and then they have like um, they have like a Star Wars special one where like basically where they like ask questions. What is the name of the droid uh, or what's the, the droid number of uh, uh, this droid in that movie in this particular scene? And then like, they're like crazy guys who like study up and they basically know every everything. It's like it's like yeah. Sam Witwer is in there, for example. He he used to be a Star Wars Schmodown champ. He's he, he knows so much about Star Wars. It's ridiculous. He's, he's yeah. really good. Well, I remember when, like, when the the first like Trilio Pursuit, Star Wars Trilio Pursuit came yeah. game came out, and I remember getting it with my roommates a long time ago, and I was like, "Get ready, this is, I'm going to annihilate." But I just don't know any of the newer <laughs> canon stuff, so I cannot compete with all that stuff. So if it's the old movies, I can annihilate yeah. fairly well. But it's it, the newer it's pretty stuff. fun. I mean, check check it out. They have they have it as pot, as podcast <laughs> version, so you can basically guess along. That's uh, that's very nice to do, and uh, it's, that's like what I because I have like an hour um, commute every day to work, and uh, so I basically hear so much podcast like every time I'm on the road, and this is definitely mm -hmm. one of them. Um, okay. Uh, oh, what I wanted to ask was uh, how yeah. uh, how how is it the other way since you don't have to deal with the licensing for you. It might come up later as well, but yeah, I was interested in that. Say, so, say again, what's the um, question? Since you uh, said earlier, uh, you had to deal with the like the 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 for this uh, Star Wars Far Away Galaxy print, you had to deal with a lot of licensing and like going back and forth between Disney. And you said uh, something like that that's not the normal way you did stuff before or have to do. And stuff. normally, I just yeah, normally I'll just do the painting and and just put it out. <laughs> oh, okay, that's that's easy. <laughs> why wh and hope for the best wh but how how is it then with the licensing how, how do why do you don't have to like worry about it or is or do you worry about it or how, how's that well it's not something it's uh, it, my stuff is just kind of a parody thing okay. and, like in their limited their limited amounts of things so i mean if i wanted to do a really huge run of something or kind of try to make it an official thing then we could try to try to do something like that mm -hmm. but um but normally, like with the great showdowns, it's never been. It's usually the sort of thing where I'll do the showdowns, and then the director or some of the filmmakers will reach out to try to um, get one of those paintings or something like that. It would be, it's the sort of thing which just celebrates it. Mm -hmm. So okay, it's, I it's see. a little relationship we seem to have, but it seems alright. Oh yeah, and one good question: What's your favorite Star Wars character from the piece, maybe, or in general? Okay, hmm. tough question, huh? <laughs> in general, that's a tough question. Um, I, I guess I should have uh, thought about that before. <laughs> uh, I always liked, I honestly always liked those aliens um, in the cantina that look like the old school aliens that have a real yeah, yeah. smooth sounding conversational style. Like those have always been like, as far as the sounds about of Star Wars uh -huh. that I love, their voices are the most soothing. Like they're like, like they have a real soothing voice. So I really love those guys. Anytime they're on the screen. I just get happy. So. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah, I like those guys. Okay. Yeah. If if I have to stick with aliens or, or like the 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 creatures from Star Wars, I guess I have to say uh, I'm a big Yava fan. Yava. Yeah. The 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 tiny I see ones. You already. Yeah. Huh? Okay. okay. So yeah, that's nice. That's... So you do know what more than I do. <laughs> <laughs> but you you know what the ones I'm talking about, right? The there's the tiny ones with the with the like the hoodie and like the glowy eyes, and they say always say Jawa? yeah Jawa. Oh, what did you call uh, Yava? Uh, maybe I pronounced it oh, okay. more oh, Germanish okay. because I used to like <laughs> watching it as a kid in German. Maybe that was the difference. Hey, who knows? It's an, it's an alien. We, who knows exactly. exactly how you pronounce it? Yeah, it's an alien. I mean, so. it's but yeah, I love them too. It's at 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 at. Nobody, nobody knows the correct <laughs> pronunciation. At, or at it's 
I guess. So that's the two-legged one. Exactly, exactly. Okay, um, so the next one I wanted to look at is Life on Planet Alien. What, what's the story behind okay. Life on Planet Alien? Um, this was originally done for, um, well, first of all, I like aliens are some of the, first, like from the movie Aliens is some of my favorite things to draw. Like I just love the shape and design of them. I love their their um, their head and this, it just, they look so beautiful mm -hmm. and they're so terrifying. So I loved drawing them, just having fun times and enjoying themselves. So <laughs> I've drawn them a number of times and this specific one was for a book. It was, it was for an aliens themed book that okay. never came out. Um, um, I just wanted. I just uh, thought about you know what it would be like on the planet where they live that they could just do exactly what they want and just have an enjoyable time, without worrying about humans or anyone kind of messing with them. Yeah. So that's, that's but kind of what that is. So. What is what is basically when let's say this is a planet, but you made the planet shaped as uh, like the egg, uh, where the mm -hmm. face ha the face hugger hatches from. What, what what is in there since it's a planet? Is it lava kind of type of thing or like or the acid they are made of? It probably is. That's your probably exactly right. It's probably okay. the acid, and it leaks out of the bottom, which is different than the Earth's core. That's true. So it just kind of leaks out the bottom. So they just kind of they go down there and bathe in it and have a good time. It doesn't seem to bother them too much, <laughs> but it's fun. It's just fun though coming up with those sorts of gags. Like having, I take comfort in these scenes that have a lot going on. I think I was inspired a lot by like Richard Scarry books mm -hmm. when I was a child. You know, where there's just so much happening in these books that you every time you read it, you you see little side mm -hmm. stories happening and stuff like that. And it, there's comfort in coming up with, like, thinking about, like, what would be some scenes on Planet Alien and drawing them all, like, a, a bunch and then just kind of piecing them together. Like, what would the, a nursery be like? How would they be, you know, <laughs> um, what would they, some of the activities they'd be doing? Would they have story time for the babies? Like, I like thinking about, would they have humans <laughs> <laughs> just lay, laying around that kind of, that they have to entertain until they harvest the kids out of um, did, did you ever make up your own alien story in that way? Like, since you said, like, did they mm. tell the baby stories? Is there a, is a concept you have for children's book? Oh, for a children's book? I don't know. Yeah, interesting. <laughs> I definitely had some monster children's books. I remember in second grade for a young author's fair, every kid has to create a book mm -hmm. or whatever. For it. And it was my my second book that I ever made. Um, it was about um, a time machine monster. Mm -hmm. It was a, it was an adventure that my brother and I did. Yeah. We would just kind of play, you know, you just play with each other and your friends in the backyard and you have a scene, you know, like a mystery that you unravel. Mm -hmm. And this particular one was so fun, I guess, that I decided to make a book out of it. And it was like 100 pages long. <laughs> it was totally unreadable, but it was about going back in time where this like kind of this seaweed style one-eyed monster came through inspired by Scooby-Doo, most likely. But um, that was the only time, that was the first time I really kind of ventured into okay. an alien creature. Yeah, um, I, I have to say, like, looking at all, like, the different uh, stuff you do, um, since since I, I started, like, collecting uh, the, in, like, the, the, the movie, the alternative movie posters, because the way you basically approach, I think, or I think you approach uh, your art, picking certain scenes and characters uh, from those movies that make up um, or that make up the essence in, in, in some sort of way, I think. And uh, th this is why I got into collecting. And this is why I love all those different uh, posters you, you make because they capture this kind of moment for me. And uh, is, is that the intention behind it or? Oh, definitely. Yeah. I mean, I love distilling that stuff down. I mean, I'm a huge fan of, of like the, like what moments they choose mm -hmm. for the for those movie posters. I wish I could do the movie posters like that. They're so wonderful. But like mine is, uh, yeah, usually like say with the showdowns, uh, the great showdown series, it, that's just a, a moment uh, of tension that's memorable. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's like the, the main two protagonist and antagonist. Sometimes it's just a, a memorable scene and stuff. But I just like thinking about those scenes that kind of stick with you. Um, and what what scenes those those might be sometimes it's not necessarily the climactic scene it's just like a throwaway scene yeah. you know like like bruce willis versus the glass yeah, and yeah. die hard <laughs> like you're like dude that's a tough scene but that's like a scene you remember like one of the most famous scenes in that movie but it's certainly not a main scene but um yeah things like yeah that. I, i just watched the other day Fun. uh the movies that made us on netflix and i watched the die hard episode and this the glass one the glass definitely came up in that one so that was kind of funny <laughs> Oh man, I gotta watch that show. Oh, yeah, it's it's fun, and it's especially for I um, like Home Alone. This was like one of my kid like kid movies, and I really enjoyed mm -hmm. lo, jo, jo, enjoyed watching that one. And um, mm -hmm. yeah, so uh, the the Die Hard one was also really cool. So check check it out; it's, it's worth it. I can tell you. <laughs> yeah, 
Okay, um, the last one from the three I picked is uh, the unspooled one, uh, which you did for AFI, it was, right? Well, I didn't do it from, well, I did it for, um, uh, there's an uns uh, a podcast called Unspooled, okay. hosted by Paul Shear and Amy Nicholson. Mm -hmm. um, and they, um, they basically are going through the AFI top 100 list. Mm -hmm. I think they pulled from 2000 something. I don't know. They, they had to choose one because it's constantly changing every year. Mm -hmm. And they're going through and watching every single movie and then doing an episode on, on, on the making of them and kind of what they think of it. And if they think it's the right spot or if it deserves to be on the list. Mm -hmm. And it's an amazing show. Like I love it so much. Mm -hmm. um, so they asked me to do, oh yeah, they even have a, a hundred sided die that they created. Okay. to roll to r randomly choose what next what movie to watch next there's it's very it's an amazing show like if you love movies it's like it's such an amazing show it's so good um but they asked me to do the poster for um last christmas um the, that you can kind of that they sold uh, along with the hundred sided die so to represent each movie and what they wanted to do was a little smiling object because I, I do a lot of smile faces mm -hmm. and a lot of inanimate objects that are smiling yeah. and happy and stuff so they wanted one object um, to represent each film um, uh, and on this big kind of um, this big poster with so you could kind of read along and check off the ones that you've watched and stuff like that mm -hmm. and so it was tough to like distill it down to because I haven't seen I still haven't seen all those movies on that list there's a lot of older movies that I still haven't seen yeah, that um, I'm excited to watch but so they, they had some ideas of what which one yeah, ex exactly. Like that, that would have been my next question. Have you seen like every movie on the list? How, do you know how many you you or did you check it off? Do you have do you have it somewhere checked off? No, that's a good question. No, I don't. I think I've seen. I would say I've seen about seventy percent, seventy five percent, maybe. Okay. Um, but I've been working my way through it. Like, just watched Sophie's Choice the other night, and I was like, oh boy, it's a really intense movie. But um, oh man, <laughs> like, there's it's so good, it's very good. But um uh yeah i've been watching my i've been making my way through through that list okay um, uh what, what's your favorite on it you would say do you have a favorite on it on the list yeah oh man well i have a lot of favorite movies i mean star wars and it's really generically okay <laughs> star wars and raiders of the lost ark are my favorite movies sure Back to the future isn't on the list but it should be um but uh i love exorcist i love uh i love just i don't know there's there's movies that deserve to be on it, I think for sure. But it's it's interesting to try to, to I, I I mean it's cool to kind of see it every year and see how they kind of are trying to it has to be a hundred the greatest movies of all time. So it has to be movies that were culturally relevant at the time they came out that kind of changed things. Mm. That some of these older movies we don't remember. So it's like are they the most should they be on the list or do what they what do they represent about the history yeah, it, of cinema you know it is, but it is also tough well, looking at it um from the standpoint that the way movies are made and like what they show like totally changed so the the viewers nowadays like they they probably can't handle a slow burn that well because the attention span and all of that so that's uh that's also plays into that of course that's very right. I like to when I see older movies. I like to try to really. I, I like to read about them while I'm watching it um, to try to understand what was happening when mm -hmm. they came out. And, mm -hmm. and something about school about the unspooled thing. It's Paul um, kind of does research. And he says what's going on. What other movies oh, came okay. out that time? So you kind of in context think about what's what's been happening. And and the, a lot of these things are like, oh my gosh, these are like tropes that have been used so many times that you're so mm -hmm. bored of now. But they these were some of the movies that established these tropes. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's I'm, fun to think about. I'm actually listening right now to a Star Wars podcast, which, uh, or it's not really a Star Wars podcast. It's a, their, their main thing is called Criti Critically Acclaimed, and they have a podcast format that's called Episode Zero. And they basically mm -hmm. go through every movie that, got, that uh, um, inspired Star Wars to be what it is. And like the latest episode mm. was Casablanca, for example, and they had some, they had of course some Kurosawa on it, uh, Durs. Dursu Usala, for example, which is like a Russian movie Kurosawa made in uh, in Siberia. It's like totally crazy. With it like a translator, hmm. it was like a just one. She had just one translator, and like he was like talking. And this this Dursu Usala guy, he's like basically Yoda, and it's like really really cool stuff. And hmm. um, the hmm. Wizard of Oz is in there, and like so many uh, movies, you never thought that they would make an appearance but it's it's really interesting i can i can uh, also <laughs> recommend that one <laughs>
Okay, you have some things to send me after this. I, I definitely will, yeah. Um, okay, so let's get now uh, into the interview part. Um, my first kind of question is like, always start off with, um, how, how did you get started? What, what did your career look like? Did you go to university? Did you teach yourself apprenticeship? And yeah, and so on. Um, well, I went to art school. I went to the Academy of Art College in uh, San Francisco. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to be uh, an illustrator, like a just a book illustrator. Like mostly wanted to do comics. Like I wanted to do X Men, and uh, I was a real comic fan that, in those days. So I wanted to kind of go that route. So I was kind of focused on a uh, different type of style back in those days. Um, and then after I was done, um, I got a job at uh, Lucas learning which is a branch of lucas arts doing children's star wars games it was like the mid 90s mm -hmm. or so which which games and were then, in there do you know any like the games that were in there because i can't recall uh, played them or not yeah they're not probably haven't uh wasn't the, we didn't make popular games okay. we like i made a game our first game is called yoda's challenge and there was and then there's also droid works there's job is math galaxy stuff like that not droid works is really good but i didn't work on that one i can't take credit <laughs> But um, it was around the time of Phantom Menace coming out, so it was a very exciting time to be at Lucas and working on that stuff, and I was such a huge fan. But it wasn't something, I wasn't a big game, I wasn't like a gamer, I don't even think the term gamer was around back then, so um, it was just kind of a way to kind of do art, because by the end of college I wanted to do children's picture books, but mm -hmm. it took me about 10, 15 years to actually get around to doing that. So my style kind of developed from doing, working at Lucas Learning and kind of doing more cartoony kind of styles of things and kind of working with different artists and meeting other people. And then from there, go, and um, doing a lot of comics uh, and going to comic conventions at that time that were more kind of indie style and funny things. I kind of started getting into like humor, humor based things. So, and then working at this company called Double Fine that we left and started this company Double Fine to do some games like Psychonauts and Brutal Legend mm -hmm. there. Um, so that was kind of my path. Uh, and then eventually doing, I started doing picture books about 10 years ago or so. So, mm -hmm. um, so, uh, and then showing in galleries and such. So my first kind of, um, my first, I, my first galleries I showed at were gallery nucleus and gallery 1988 yeah. down in Los Angeles, which is where I live now. But, um, uh, and my first pop culture show was at ninth gallery 1988. It was something uh, called I am eight bit It was one of their first um, pop culture shows. It was like in, like artwork inspired by video games. Um, and they had to convince me because I was at that point, I really didn't like the idea of doing pop culture because I was, I was into like creating my own things, my own concepts. I was like, I don't want to redo someone else's thing. I mean, just in my style, just it kind of bummed me out, but they convinced me to try it. And so the first thing that I ever painted for that show was something called Paperboy 1884, which was uh, one of my oh. favorite video games. Yeah, there it is. Hold um, on, hold on. I'm else? just, I'm yeah. just gonna put it in there for us. But yeah, sorry, you can keep okay. talking. So now the. By the way, see. I can only see, I can see you. I'm not sure what you put up. Yeah, but... I put the paperboy, uh, the the image in, which is which has like the 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 saloon and stuff like that. The I don't know if there's more, but right. yeah, I put this in. Oh, that's it. Okay, that's it. Yeah. So yeah, but basically that was a fun, like that was my first kind of dipping my toes in, and it was really fun because it was like thinking about. My, um, Paperboy came out. It was like the game where you deliver papers to good houses and evil houses, and the actual controller was a BMX yeah. bike controller. Um, it was my absolute favorite game, <laughs> um, and I wanted. To, it came out in 1984, so I wanted to kind of think, oh, okay, well, if it came out in 1884, I would do all the gags 1800 style. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of where that concept came in, and it, it went, and made me so uh, happy. I had a real fun time doing it. And the next time, the next show, I did these things called the Pac Mans, which is like a yeah. bunch of little moments. Pac-Man moments of just them all. Um, I, I, I was going to do a big piece, uh -huh. um, Richard Scary style, but then I decided it'd be cool to make them kind of candy-sized pieces so people can uh, afford them and kind of bring, kind of eat them up and, and get small pieces like to bring yeah, home rather than spending money on big pieces. That's you know? that's exactly one of the things that I, uh, uh, that's what I'm always looking for, like smaller pieces because you have limited wall space, as, as you can see in the back, and like most yeah, posters right. are that big i mean i i oh, posters are huge. it's tw 24 yeah. by 36 are most of them uh if you're lucky you have like smaller ones like the mysterio one which is just 18 by 24 mm -hmm. but that's also very big in the end and like having smaller yeah. ones like the ali ma spec here uh yep. that's that's probably the or it, that's probably even smaller than uh the pac-man one right 
the Pac-Man one, yeah, it was very small. But the one after that that I did, so they had a show called uh, Crazy for Cult, which is another early pop yeah. culture show that they did, which is based on cult movies. Uh-huh. Um, and that was the first time, for that first show, that was the first time I did the Great Showdowns. Mm-hmm. So I did 10 Great Showdowns for that. And that was also something that I wanted to maybe do as a, as a bigger piece, but I was like, okay, I want to do smaller bite-sized ones for that. Um, and that was, and those are about three by three inches okay. or something like that. And so that was the first time I did that, did that concept. And then I did them for every Crazy for Cult show. And then I started doing the, doing the online series and kind of mm-hmm. put out some books. And that became my big thing that I love doing so much. So, but also this, the second, um, the second Crazy for Cult, I did the poster that I guess I would say maybe that was my first poster that I had ever done. That was, uh, the poster for the show was Crazy for Cult. It was the Cult Tree. So it was just a big tree with all a bunch of my favorite cult movies yeah. like in the tree kind of hanging out together. Um, and that was kind of the first time that I just put a bunch of characters together, just hanging around, being happy, enjoying themselves. So I guess that would be maybe the start. OK, of those those sorts of things, the pop culture thing. That's very me. cool. I, I put up the, the Pac-Man uh, range as a Pac-Man. Uh, is, is it at your house or? or, or... Well, I did. That was in the gallery because okay. I wanted them to be kind of because there's power numbers for those. Like, like, like seeing a bunch of in, in one spot, yeah. you might as well kind of like, and it's pixelated, so you might as well kind of arrange it in a cool spot so, or a cool way. So I think we arranged those in the Pac-Man. I think that was what it was on the on the wall. I remember sending them. I arranged them a bunch of ways on my floor and took pictures mm-hmm. to send to the gallery to make suggestions on like what characters you can maybe arrange them yeah. in. I think I think they arranged it in the Pac-Man one, but okay. But anyways, yeah. And um. Was there a moment, like, uh, basically when all this started, was there a moment when you said, oh, yeah, this this is what I want to do the next uh, 10 years or something like that? Was was there this kind of moment or did you just go with the flow and, like, basically said, oh, yeah, people like that, so I'm keep on doing that? Or uh, how was that? I think it's more going with the flow. Like, I just want to keep, uh, keep doing things that uh, make me happy and that people seem to like. Um, and then when it runs its course... Um, maybe move on to something else, mm-hmm. but also do multiple things, multiple things at once, you know, yeah. so uh, to keep things fresh and keep myself feeling good. Because I also had an online comic that I did at Double Fine called the Double Fine Action Comics. That was my daily exercise that I would do to put up these comics um, every single day. And then eventually when I started putting up those great showdowns, that became my new thing that I would put up on a regular basis. And so it kind of just like, And so the, the the comics and the picture books and the video game stuff and the doing things for galleries, like they all kind of coincide with each other and kind of fuel each other and inspire each other. So it's this sort of thing where um, I, w- I don't know how long each thing is going to last and, you know, mm-hmm. how long everything can be sustained. But it's just, you know, I, I don't know what the next thing is, too, you know, because <laughs> I like to do some shows or some video, you know, some I like to do maybe a little painting hour or something like that. Okay, yeah, yeah. We we will get to that later. So uh, just let's uh, continue with the next question because this is what what the future is going to hold is going to be in the end, obviously, okay. since Sounds we're going sense. chronologically. Great. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, the 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 site I'm doing that there, we do a lot of movie reviews. We just did the the Five Bloods review uh, for the new Spike Lee movie, and oh cool. I was wondering what uh, is what is the, the latest movie or the last movie you saw? Um, the last movie, the last more. Um, okay, well, actually, the last movie that I saw was Moonstruck. Moonstruck, <laughs> which oh. is which is an old movie. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> which which I hadn't uh, seen. I actually loved it. I thought it was so good. Cher was so good. Nicholas Cage, <laughs> bonkers. Um, so yeah, I, I loved watching Moonstruck. But I guess the last movie that I saw and then did a painting of um, was um, Uncut Gems, which was okay. Uh, which I actually watched right before my exhibition and just did a painting of that under mm-hmm. the wire just to do a showdown of him versus the gems. That movie stressed me out. It was very stressful. It was. It was right. You were like, oh my god, why, why? <laughs> He's like, yeah, it's, I know. It's very stressful. It was like nonstop stress. There was never yeah. a moment to yeah. relax in that movie. So exactly. Which is an interesting feeling. Not only my favorite feeling, but I liked it. <laughs> yeah, it's like if you if you're a stressed person, it's it's definitely has have you has you on the edge uh, the whole movie. So it's like crazy. 
Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, you put you put some other stuff uh, you sent me over. You, uh, she's got to have it. Is is it? Oh yeah, that's another one I just saw too. Uh, Moonstruck and she's got to have it were the two that I just saw recently because I've been trying to make my way through some of the classics mm-hmm. and I'd never seen she's got to have it before. And that was I think Spike Lee's first um, first film that he was made it? first like kind of yeah I think that was his first like major the, film he made like yeah. smaller movies and it was stuff eight, before 86 that. or so right something like that is that possible definitely 80s 80 yeah it was early 80s might be 83 or 84 um because I think um do the right thing was 86 or 87 but that was like it was it was way more arty than I expected it was mm-hmm. a really pretty movie it was I liked it a lot I really liked it a lot and I thought his character um was it um, what was his name? Uh, Mars. Oh yeah, Mars, Mars Blackmoon. 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 Yeah. Blackmoon. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was so good. His character yeah. was so good, and I and I know that like that's like because I had also just watched that uh, documentary, Last Dance, the Michael Jordan uh, yeah. documentary. Oh, and great! It was amazing. Point. And yeah. that was like where he because Nike hired him to do the to commercial. do those commercials, yeah. and as Mars Blackman, like, mm-hmm. you, you got to use that character. It's so good. Um, and that was, he was definitely the best part of that. It's, it's got to be the shoes, Mike. It's got to be the shoes. I know. So good. Yeah. So and good. Um, uh, did, did you watch the, TV, the, the Netflix show as well? I mean, there's the Netflix show. It was yeah. basically similar. And he did a lot of directorial work on that as well. Uh, definitely um, producing. And um, yeah, it was turned out really good. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I watched the first episode. And I really liked it mm-hmm. a lot. I just forgot to get back to it. And I also was thinking, like, I want to watch the movie before I watch the show. Mm-hmm. And it was good. I really like those actors. Like, yeah, it's it stuck uh, it stuck really close to what uh, the the movie's like. So that was that was really cool to see, and um, mm-hmm. yeah, I, I really enjoyed that one. And uh, you also watched Thirteenth, right? I did watch Thirteenth. Yeah, and I've been preaching the good word about yeah. it. I want everyone to watch it. I Me think too, it's, yeah. I think every single person in the world should watch that. Well, especially this nation. But yeah, yeah, it blew me away. Blew me away that movie. It is, yeah. It's like that's a one. I actually taught like the the Netflix series. She's got to have it. I taught that in my my English class, my um, uh, advanced English class, because I'm a teacher. Actually, I don't know if I told you about it, but I'm an English I'm an English teacher for high school students, uh-huh. and I have like an advanced English class uh, here in Germany. And um, I actually taught. She's got to have it for the kids, so they could like basically learn uh, uh, in, with this kind of role model on because they have we have one semester that's about ethnic diversity and uh, so I and I can pick basically what what I like what I want to teach and I always like uh, try to get into the like Black Lives Matter movement and all of that so um, that's always mm-hmm. interesting and I picked she's got to have it to, to do that and the kids really enjoyed mm-hmm. it and this was good times and also 13th we went to that um, yeah so yeah, there's there's good stuff, good stuff going on to teach. Good, man. Awesome. Yeah, there's a lot of good movies. I like that on Netflix and Amazon, all those places they have the section um, where you can like watch like a whole section for Black Lives Matter. Yeah. Not necessarily that theme, but just like movies to expose yourself to like. Yeah, exactly. Theme. It's it's a good thing. I um right. we do we do on the podcast. Um, my my colleague, she's also a teacher, and um. We do together. We do a news podcast, and we always have like a, a what to watch segment. And we just basically last week, and we just uh, told like the uh, everybody since they started with the Black Lives Matter collection now, and put like all the movies in there to to like what to watch and like educate yourself. And that's like really helpful uh, that they're doing that and um, put more awareness on on, on this matter. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Glad to do that. Yeah. Um, okay. So next question would be, what is your, what are you looking forward to? With like, what movie do you really want to see? Well, I am very excited about the Five Bloods. Okay. That one okay. or Four Bloods? What is it? Five. Four Bloods. Five Bloods. Five Bloods. Five Bloods. Okay. Five Bloods. Um, I'm really excited about that movie, and I know it's available to watch now, so I just need to get to it. Yeah. Do it. It's it's a yeah. long watch. It's excited. a tough watch. I don't know how you on violence because uh, it's very very violent. Ooh, okay, interesting. I'll prepare myself. It's it's like I'm okay. I'm okay on violence. I'm not a huge fan of it, mm-hmm. but it seems like it makes sense. That there movie. was there was like for example, there was uh, some some material. I'm not gonna spoil anything, but uh, there was some material yeah, no that was like very tough. I I I'm actually cool with with that stuff, but I said, oh oh, I don't know if that should be in there. Oh, boy. Okay, I mean. Yeah, I mean, if it's used for a reason, then it makes sense. But if if, if it's, it's just gratuitous, I'm not a huge fan of it. Let's, let's put it this way: you watched Black Black Landsman, right? 
I have not seen it yet. Oh, that's okay. another one I need to Oh, okay. <laughs> no, I need to. You do. You, you do. Watch. That's that's a very good movie. I think it, yeah, I think Black Klansman is better than The Five Bloods, but The Five Bloods is really good. It's I think it's one of the best movies of the year. Wow, okay. All right. I'm excited. But yeah, no more spoilers. No, Don't. I won't. I won't. I like I, I like that your spoiler was there's violence in it. That that's enough. So there's this one part that's very violent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's it's like it's for that one part. because like for example my, my colleague she is like really anti-violence and like she doesn't like movies that have violence in it but she watched it huh. either way because it's like this important piece of uh, uh cinematic uh, movie making in, in this way and uh yeah she's like always like the measurement and if if there's too much violence she can't really watch it and now I even said there's too much violence. So I basically prepare you because you need to be prepared. It's like really tough. That's all I'm saying. Let's see. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna keep, I'm, gonna, I'm not, I don't think I'm gonna surprise my wife with that. Yeah, you shouldn't, it. you shouldn't. I'm not gonna let her know that it's gonna be <laughs> violent, but yeah, okay, cool. Okay, and another one you really enjoy, but which got pushed back is Wonder Woman, right? Oh yeah, Wonder Woman, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm very excited about Wonder Woman. But yeah, what's the deal with it? Is it? gonna be because that I mean because that first movie I was very excited about I thought that was my that was definitely my by far my favorite DC movie I, th I loved it, it was, I, I think it's but, about uh, the the pushback is I think about Tenet because Tenet got pushed back two weeks and now they pushed it back as well yeah. because uh, I think like so to like not have like a uh, uh, competition basically from from their own studio okay so is there a date for it or you know? i think it's just november now i think it's just it's not that far or oh. two months pushed back or something like that so it's it's not that big of a deal but um they pushed it back so okay. yeah i'll watch it i'll watch it when it comes out definitely I, I'll, i'm looking forward to that as well uh i wonder how they uh put like like the the uh chris pine character back in and how, how, yeah. how, how, how this is all going to work so uh we will see but but i'm really more excited the most that i'm most excited i'm, I'm about tenet i'm i'm really like bummed out that they pushed oh, it yeah. back two weeks because this is a movie i definitely want to see this is i am excited about tenet too yeah yeah, yeah. I, I it's like crazy that nolan basically said yeah it has to be in july i don't want to push back <laughs> and like it's, it huh. was crazy but it's still in july two weeks later but uh um yeah it's it's gonna be fun <clears throat> okay um what's your favorite movie is there is there one my absolute favorite movie yeah i i really have a hard time with absolute absolute like i know that. it's hard but like I, for example uh, yeah I, I can say that i always say uh star wars empire strikes back because i'm a big star wars fan and so i pick just pick that because i know that's one of my go-to movies so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i mean for me definitely star wars raiders of the lost ark mm -hmm. uh and back to the future those are all generically wonderful. Fistful of Dollars is one of my favorite mm. movies. Um, Exorcist, Shining. Yeah. Because it's all all encompassing. There's a lot of different ones. To be honest, Mad Max, the, um, Fury Road is one of my favorite movies. Okay. Yeah. Did you did you watch the um, black and chrome version? I did not watch that one. That's that's I very interesting in in the way of the the, the lighting and it how uh, it it gives. A different feel than the original one, but it's, it's really cool to see. So if if you have some time, watch it. It's it's worth it. It's like the Logan. I just like love the cut. colors. What's that? But I love the colors of, of the normal. I love the colors of Fury Road. How it was like. I know, but with the like, I think the lighting yeah. makes a difference. I think that's very cool to see. Okay, all right, I'll try it. I'll try it. Sure, sure, sure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think those are probably some. Of my, um, those, I, mean, I have. I, I have a bunch of favorites. I would say. Yeah, it's it's hard. It's hard. Yeah, basically, it's like picking your favorite kid. You can't do that because there's so many good ones and or favorite song or something like that. It's like. Okay, and um, how did you like the regular posters? Like, for example, let's let's talk about the Star Wars one, the one you you put into the folder, the one you picked. Oh yeah. So growing up, the interesting thing, like, um, like that was my first time. Like I remember the the feeling. Like I love that poster, mm -hmm. and I like that 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 kind of like, um, uh, they use that for I think the National Lampoon's Vacation. They use that kind of style for everything after that. It seemed like there were so many posters that had somebody holding something and someone hanging onto their leg mm -hmm. or whatever. That was like they just loved using that. But I remember early on looking at that poster and realizing like, man, those characters don't look anything <laughs> like the actual actors. Like as a kid, I remember that kind of make me feel weird. I still loved it. 
but it's also like, man, that Luke Skywalker is so buff. <laughs> exactly, and his right. His face is not Mark Hamill. Like that's like, and it's so it was so funny to me. And it was something that like whenever I saw that on any um, book cover or movie poster, I was always like, oh my god, that like <laughs> really kind of makes me feel weird. Like, <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. even but even so, like it was still one of my favorites. And whereas like say Drew Struzan posters, that was my other mm. like absolute favorite like movie poster artist growing yeah. up. You know, because he had. He, because his likeness was so good, but he also had an energy to the way he, um, it wasn't just he just painted it, he had an energy to the way that he rendered it that was yeah. very exciting. Like the Back to the so, Future oh, one, for example, they, I, th I think they had just had a release at Bottleneck for the third yeah, one. Yeah, they did. They did, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Back to the Future was amazing, and Raiders of the Lost Ark, I just, those, mm. I don't know, I loved all those things. His, his, and I know his, his signature even so well. Yeah. Like he's one of the signatures I know so well. I use, he was huge inspiration to me for sure. But, um, but yeah, I would say those those two movie posters. Yeah. He's, I think that uh, I, I started following him on uh, Twitter and he's like posting a lot of cool stuff, uh, which goes into the direction like um, – uh, how how he created those posters and that's like very cool to see when when, when you when you look at it and uh, I really enjoyed that one on this part. Oh yeah, there, there's another one. Okay, so an important poster. I yeah. didn't send this to you, so surprise. But um, <laughs> or maybe I did send you. But the thing as a kid, yeah, like, it's I, in it there. It's in there. To, I it pull is? it up. Okay, okay. So the thing, like as a kid, it took me a very long time. It, it was like I think I watched it for the first time, like. 15 years ago or something like mm -hmm. I didn't watch when I was a kid. I was scared. I was scared of scary movies. Like I didn't watch uh, like Nightmare on Elm Street. I didn't watch Friday the 13th. I was, I refused to watch slasher movies mm -hmm. and violent movies mm -hmm. and scary movies. I was very scared of a kid, you know? And, um, that one, like I didn't know what it was about. I had these ideas of what it's about, but that mm -hmm. poster terrified me that like that poster terrified me. Mm -hmm. And then when I actually watched it, I was like, that poster really is like, that really does not necessarily happen at all. Like, that's not necessarily a moment. Like there's not a, like it's, it was just, it gave me such an amazing feeling like that poster my entire life mm -hmm. and it scared me so much, but the actually watching it was a completely different experience, but still terrifying, but for a different, in a different way, mm -hmm. you know, but, um, that made a huge impression on me. That poster. Yeah. It stuck with me. Did, did, did you ever, con did you ever consider doing, um, like, um, let's call it a regular, uh, movie poster and like by yourself from, for the thing or whatever kind of movie you really enjoyed or the poster that you really enjoyed, like an homage basically. You mean to do like an actual movie yeah. poster, movie mm -hmm. poster? Um, yeah, I think that's why I, well, I started to do that Clash of the Titans one, mm -hmm. but I don't know why that fell by the wayside. I think because they had a, a number of other, I think it was going to be Medusa's head with a bunch of stuff happening in it. And they already had a Medusa's head. They had other Clash of the Titans movie posters coming at that time. So mm -hmm. I think we had to shelve it. Um, but I would love to do, I still would like to do kind of, uh, posters in that. Uh, kind of thinking about it as like a movie poster because instead of just kind of doing a parody comedy kind of poster of it, you know, so mm. um, I would definitely like to do it. I know that the thing, I actually have a toy, a thing toy coming out soon. Yeah. Which I don't know if it'll come out after this is is, is released. Is not. it actually a toy or is it uh, uh, like a sculpture? It's, artist. it's like a sculpture. You can't really pose it. There's okay. only 50 of them made at a time. Ah, okay. Yeah. Um, I, 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 yeah, speaking of sculptures, I mean, I really enjoyed your yeah, uh, AT-AT one. I uh, I really wanted to get that one, but didn't head around those two thousand five hundred dollars laying. So, <laughs> yeah, those are pretty. Those are pretty big. But yeah, I know those are definitely cool. the biggest. The ones for the exhibition were the biggest toys that I ever kind of that we ever made for sure. Mm -hmm. And so it's a lot of work, and we're gonna hand paint them. Yeah, definitely, like it looks so. really great. I really enjoy it. I can't take credit for the sculpting. This guy, Dave Bondi, did the sculpting. Okay. Like, I did the turnarounds and worked with them. He did the sculpting in, in 3D, mm -hmm. um, and I worked with him on that. And then um, and then uh, it was printed up. Mm. Um, okay, I see. So anyways, but yeah. <laughs> but those are... So yeah, I do a lot of those little toys, and they're all the same kind of... They're usually an edition of 50 or so, mm -hmm. and it's just like the showdowns kind of... Yeah, yeah, I, I, exactly. I saw that. I saw that, and people were asking about it. I think um, when the toys come, because they're really excited for the toys. Yeah, the and, thing was pushed back. It was going to be a couple, few weeks ago, but or a couple weeks ago. But I think we're going to probably probably do it next week. But we'll see. Okay, it'll be soon. Okay, cool. That's very cool. What are the last recent posters you really got into? You really enjoyed? 
Um, well, I really liked um, the Labyrinth poster. The Labyrinth like, one. Mm -hmm. I, I had that. Um, I had that in the release podcast. I featured that in the episode. So yeah, that's like, that's a really. I think good it's one. beautiful. I think it's beautiful. I love the composition of it. I love the characters. Mm -hmm. It's like, who, who is it? I, is it Julian. Um, uh, it was a long name. Uh, Julian Tedesco. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah, you're right. So good. I, 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 I loved. Um, I just loved how the character, the expressions. There's so much life in way that those characters were drawn i was very very impressed with that poster mm. um but also i have to say i am not like and, and i love old greg ruth stuff so i and i follow him on twitter so anytime he puts something out or matt taylor or oliver barrett like mm. um i get excited about any new things they put out but honestly i, I don't have my finger on the pulse necessarily mm. of new posters um but uh but those are some of the guys I get really excited. Yeah, about. I, we we had Greg Ruth. We had him on for our third episode, actually. So that was uh, a little while back now. And he was just a great guy. It was just a wonderful talk uh, with him. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm talking actually to uh, Oliver Barrett as well. Uh, as he's he used to, he used to live in Cle Cleveland, so a little uh, right. local patriotism, <laughs> and yeah, we, mm -hmm. we were talking, but um, he didn't have a chance uh, to do it yet because he, there was like stuff in his personal life going on, so um, busy with that. But his like Godzilla good Godzilla work I put, just put up is really nice, and yeah, and you put in the full metal jacket one, mm -hmm. which is super cool. I also enjoyed the Rambo right. one that, that just came out, which was awesome to yeah. see. And yeah, he's he's just a great artist. I uh, can't wait to talk to him. I think it's going to be um, maybe next month that we will have find some time to have him on the show. So that's that's good to see him. I'm very happy to see how the posters he's made because I remember the first MondoCon that I met all met him at was that um, he hadn't done a poster yet, and he just was there with all of his baseball mm -hmm. zombie guys. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Which I thought like, and I was so impressed with those baseball characters that he did. I. I I was blown away by those by those posters, but mm. then to see how he's grown with those with the movie posters was just incredible. Yeah. And as, speaking it. of baseball guys, I mean Matt Taylor, uh, you also liked. I just pulled up some yeah. of his art, and uh, he's he's also been a regular on the release episode, putting out so much great stuff with the colors. He's like uh, he's like really really talented as well, and uh, he just put out uh, also some baseball cards. Right, there's a couple of people who who came up with us like collecting cards. You could actually buy hmm. it. So if you're if you're a baseball card collector, you should look into that. I think I, I don't know. I don't know if Mondo released them, but at least somebody released hmm. them. But it's like really really cool stuff. Yeah, I think I'm not. I'm not even a huge uh, baseball fan, but, but I still love those things. I still okay. love watching. It doesn't matter the content. Yeah. If that's great, if it can get you pumped on baseball, I might start getting into baseball just because of all <laughs> of her stuff or Matt or Matt's things. I don't know. I'll get into baseball. Yeah. I mean, my dad used to collect baseball cards. I mean, I remember as a, as kids, mm -hmm. like we had a comic book collecting, and my dad was into bat, baseball cards. Yeah. So he had his little ne Neko wafers box with all his baseball mm -hmm. cards, and we were so into like the idea of how um, how much comics are worth. We're like, Dad, what if you you might have some amazing baseball cards? <laughs> we're gonna check it out for you. So we got a baseball card guide, and we looked through his stuff, and he had some. He had like a Mickey Mantle, mm -hmm. and he had some uh, Don Drysdale. He had some cards that were like worth a lot of money. So. Yeah. It was very exciting for us to kind of see what he was doing, but that was the extent of our baseball card. Collection. Yeah, that's gonna be like, oh like at, at one point when I have kids, it's gonna be like they're gonna go through the poster collection. Oh, there's some Scott C. That's worth a lot. So that that's 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 me <laughs> in this particular way. <laughs> hey, great, it'll be great. If that stays, stays the case. Yeah. Um, uh, do you have like an opinion on like uh, on galleries? Like uh, you said, you follow Mondo, but uh, and like the the galleries that brought you up is is, is that a, do you like the way the galleries uh, operate? Because there are a lot of different artists who don't publish their work on a gallery, or they just do digital art at some point and or key art for some extent. But um, what do you think of the the, the the what the galleries do? Um, I think it's I. I... I, I, I kind of have stepped back from doing gallery shows just because I want to focus on books and things. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, I, I love the experience of going to a gallery and, and seeing work in that way. Like it's it's nice to see work um, online and kind of have access to whatever you want, to whenever you want and everything. Mm -hmm. But there's something about seeing them. Um, and I like um, I like when galleries kind of um, uh, kind of shape shape the experience around what uh, what the gallery show is like those I think some of my favorite shows that I've done were at Gallery Nicholas for different book releases where we would 
turn the gallery into whatever the theme was. Like, like we did a, uh, I had a book that, a picture book that I did with Bob Dylan called, um, not with Bob Dylan. He, I don't <laughs> think he knows what it was. It was created, but it was based on one of his songs of dogs run free. Mm -hmm. So it was just dogs running around going crazy, having a good time. So we created these kind of elements that were in the gallery to make you feel like you're in the book. And then in the middle of the, um, of the gallery was a zone just for dogs. So you could bring your dogs to come and hang out. And there's a, there's a bar for the humans and there was a bar for the dogs, dogs get snacks, mm -hmm. get drinks. So it was like this kind of experience where you can like kind of be a part of what, of all the art together. And then seeing everything on the wall together is a wonderful feeling like being in that. So I like when galleries have that kind of really immersive feel experience, you know, and there's another book that I did called hug machine mm -hmm. about this kid that calls himself the hug machine. He's always into hugging everything. So we have an obstacle course that you could do when you're there, but runs through the gallery where you can hug different things and time yourself and the, the experience of and it ends in this big, these Beetlejuice style arms mm. that kind of can go around you and stuff. So I just really, I really enjoy when, when galleries do that sort of thing. But that said, I haven't had the chance to go to many gallery shows the last few years. So, and now that we're in COVID, that's a real bummer mm. um, aspect of it is that you're not allowed to kind of go um, to galleries. But I mean, unless I would think that, some galleries must be opening to, to like on a like scheduled basis. Yeah. Like if you um, can come in. Yeah, I had I had for for example take time to take it. Uh, at Bottleneck Gallery in New York. Uh, basically, I, I called them for, before because they don't have like opening times. They are basically just they have all the art at the wall on their walls and uh, but basically there's a lot of tubes and a lot of packing stuff going on and the the guys are sitting mm -hmm. on their computers and doing doing the work and you can just basically walk around and look at the stuff that's on the wall but they're super friendly i i really love those guys they i i had the, the john wick uh, which is up which was like for a special screening for the uh, for the gaps uh, show he oh. did he did uh, the polish artist i don't you ever heard of him um no i haven't i'm not good with names but yeah but yeah uh, i know that post yeah the the the, this, the guy is called gaps at the, and he did the for the john wicks ring he did those and it was just like 150 uh all in all and um the, if you bought a ticket you basically got the print and they were so nice because i came a couple of weeks later because uh, i was in new york for vacation and then i had the chance to uh talk to them for a little bit and then i was like asking hey is it possible i ordered already some stuff but is it possible to buy some stuff do you have it here and they said oh, no sorry just online and it's like okay that's too bad and then i looked around and i was like after 30 minutes i was about to go and then they, they basically gave me the poster so that was like oh my god it's like wow that was super nice just a little surprise and a present so they're really nice guys i can like i, I can say the so galleries galleries the, in this business they yeah. do good work well, I know that we had, I was, I was very fortunate to get like the legends of the great showdowns exhibition at gallery 1988 mm. opened at the beginning of March. Mm. And we had, uh, during the duration of that show, we were going to have a, a bunch of in the gallery, like experiences in the gallery for people to come and have drawing parties mm -hmm. and experiences all through it. But we had to cancel most of them because of, because the lockdown happened right after it opened. Mm -hmm. But we at least had the opening night and the opening weekend where people could come in and experience everything together. And that was that was so fun. We had a trophy for the first first guy in line, Robert Davis. Davis and he got the trophy for the first guy in line. I think they were camping. Yeah, but it was a wonderful it was a wonderful experience. I'm so happy that we had that and we got to all see each other and be with each other. It's like that's when I feel the community. I mean, I see the community online, but when you're actually at a gallery with everyone, mm -hmm. that's when you feel tangibly have your relationships. And I see a lot of the like the poster collectors and a lot of the people that do collect my art. Mm -hmm. um, and I have relationships with all of them. We could like kind of. We got together the Friday before when everyone was in line and we just kind of had drinks at the bar next door. And it was like a real wonderful feeling because I think all of us yeah. appreciate each other, you know, and, and people do things for each other in that community. And I don't know, I really like it quite a lot. But there are many galleries besides 1988 and um, Nucleus that I've shown with I've sh that I love a lot. Like mm. I love Gallery Arludic in Paris mm -hmm. is a wonderful gallery. Okay. Um, and they have a museum called uh, Art, Art Ludic that they are moving to a new location, which is celebrates um, celebrates uh, art in all of entertainment, like movies and mm -hmm. cartoons, mm -hmm. and um, it's 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 a wonderful museum. So they're going to have uh, a good space there. And uh, um, gallery um, in Mexico. Oh man, what was the one? Uh, oh man, <laughs> I should I should have written these things down. I should have written them down. Uh, Okay, I'll have to think about that one. But, it's okay. <laughs> um, 
my my mind is not good at remembering things unless I write them down. But but yeah, anyways, there's there's many galleries that I love to show with and work yeah, with. Yeah, so. sadly in Germany there are not that many galleries that focus on this kind of stuff. But um, uh, a couple of other guys and me, we try to um, try to do something about it and make something happen in Germany. So that's that's like our like long term plan and. Uh, I think it could yeah. happen. So let's let's see how it goes. Actually, actually, uh, because of the podcast today, I got um, somebody wrote me a message. Hey, I'm also in Berlin, but I'm not from Berlin. So uh, is there any art places? And I really enjoyed your podcast, blah, blah, blah. And we got into talking. So that's like really cool to see that there are more people, basically not just the online community that or or because of the online community to see people around the area or at least from Germany that have the same kind of hobby and uh, do stuff like that. So that's good, good to see. That's good. That's a good feeling. Really quick, Guru Gallery. Guru Gallery. Mexico City. Okay. That was, that was my, favorite, my favorite gallery there. Um, but yeah, I like I like the community aspect. I, I tried for a while that meetup thing. Mm -hmm. There's like, there's that app that you could kind of do meetups for like-minded kind of people yeah. that come do drawing gatherings. Like they get together and drink and draw and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, because there's because I know that like in towns like Los Angeles there's like there's sketch party and there's things that yeah. like you meet every Thursday there's groups that meet and so I think in smaller towns and other towns where it's harder harder to find those groups yeah. um, for artists and stuff to hang out with like I think meetup is maybe a, a way that you can find meet other like minded people that share that like if you like board games there's a board game group probably yeah. in your town so um, I don't know I think that's a good way to find it if you're not able to kind of. Mm -hmm. Just walk on the street and find it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but now again, now it's like doesn't you know can't happen right now unless until we yeah. get past this thing. Exactly. Right. But yeah, it's uh, in Germany. It's uh, it, it started to get back to normal. So, um, but uh, yeah. all in all, it's, it's 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 tough. Okay. Um, speaking of galleries and uh, having beautiful posters on the walls, uh, do you collect as well? Is that is there anything you collect? Or you just do your stuff, or do you trade with other artists? Maybe. Um, honestly, I don't. I trade for, with other artists every once in a while, but I don't actually have like I don't have any of my art on the walls. I don't have uh, there's there's only a few artists that I have on the walls, and otherwise it's kind of like more kind of uh, textiles and other things that my wife and I enjoy because my wife is a um, uh, design specialist at an auction house. So okay. She has a lot of cool design work that we have on the walls, but. Um, but there are certain artists that I like. I don't collect movie posters necessarily mm -hmm. because they're so big, yeah. and I like that people <laughs> do. Um, and so it's like, I mean, but there are some beautiful ones that um, I don't know. Maybe I'll get into it, or I have to convince my wife where I can do it. Or I have a studio. Okay, so here's the thing. Yeah. We just moved into a new house, yeah. um, like in March. So or in April, we moved into this house. So we still are kind of setting it up. Mm -hmm. And I have a, I have a studio that I work out with with a bunch of artists. Mm -hmm. Um, that I we're not going into right now. So this is my little spot that I, I hang out in. But there are some some of the artists. Um, are you going to put up any of these images when I when I mention some? Of sure, these images? of course I will. I'm I'm just waiting on your sign. Got it. <laughs> my favorite, I will say, uh, my absolute favorite thing piece that I have actually is by. Um, let's see, I can remember her name, Christina. Wait, I think I wrote that down. All <laughs> um, right, where is it in my notes? Um, your Take name? your time. It's 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 all good. We have all the time in the world. Uh, oh yeah, Christina McCarty. That's okay. her name. Which I wrote it down so I can remember. That's the little puppy face. She has, she I, she had drew these little puppies. She actually did a wonderful Black Lives Matter poster too with is it, three different it, kind of it's cats, it's the one tigers. that's on linen or something like that, right? Yeah, it's mm -hmm. the one on yeah, it's the one on canvas. Uh, I love that guy. He gives me such good vibes, or she gives me such good vibes. Uh -huh. um, the little puppy face. So I'm very excited to find a good place for that to hang out. It's not, it's not, um, not yet up, right? It's not up yet. We have to find the perfect spot uh -huh. for that. So so that is one of my actual favorite things I have at my house. And then I also love, I have uh, Chris Turnham. I have a bunch of stuff. For, he's a friend of mine mm -hmm. um, that does like screen prints. He does beautiful screen prints of plants and, mm -hmm. and scenes and buildings. Um, that yeah. is just one of my the, favorites. The plant one, so I have, the plant one you send, it's it's really really beautiful. It looks very cool. I like the like all the, of his. Yeah, it's amazing. I was with him actually. We went when we we went to the 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 
um, botanical gardens, and, and he borrowed my camera to take pictures of all these plants. And I loved watching because I'm like, I knew it was going to turn this into nice. So seeing, <laughs> seeing that, I'm, I'm so going to get it's one. Like, yeah, can't wait. I'm going to get that. I got a little another one that I'm going to get that to put next to those two. That's the reason why that one is not on the wall yet, mm -hmm. is because there's going to be a little, uh, a little pair of them and stuff. Mm -hmm. And then the other one I've had for a long time. It's not a new piece, but I did a show with this with my friend John Classen that did. Uh, he did. He's a very he does some wonderful picture books. I, I want my hat back and things that are very popular. Mm -hmm. And he did design work for Leica movies like Coraline and stuff. Yeah. But we did a show together a long time ago. Um, uh, it was about called the Great Great Grand Show. It was about old timey characters and scenes and stuff. And so he did this kind of paper cutout of this minor um, that we have in that same room. Basically, our guest is room it, is like the ultimate room. The minor is the one uh, which has like the moon in the background with the with the brown uh, frame, right? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Just yeah. Put up yeah. The right he's one. just kind of standing there like yeah. this. Yeah. He's a. Oh, yeah, that's very cool. That. I think so. That's cool stuff. Because he's so good. Because John is so good at textures and flat shapes. Um, I I don't know how he does the. I mean, but I know that he pa he paints pieces on, on paper to get the textures, and then he scans it in, and then he changes the colors and everything. Mm -hmm. But for this. For this show, like the, he actually kind of figured out how to do it on paper because he never had. He wanted to give the feeling yeah. of of the Photoshop stuff that he does. So that's why he he painted on those pieces of paper. That was like at least ten years ago. Okay, that's cool. Like that. That's cool. But, and um, anyways, those are my favorite pieces. Yeah, and you had you had a couple more up. I I just pulled up the like this. I think it's all it's also canvas with like the um, which looks basically like the American flag, kind of like oh, you know yeah. what I'm talking about. Oh wow. Uh, yeah, I mean stripes. That was actually one that my my, my wife brought that she already had. I don't even okay. know the artist to that one. I love it. Yeah, I love that. I mean, that just look. Well. It makes me feel nice. I mean, just looking by looking like all the stuff you send and like the 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 way the house is and like you could see a little bit of furniture. I I have to say it's like you have a beautiful. It's gonna be a beautiful house when it's all like done. It looks really cool. I like this. I like the style. Thank you, my friend. I appreciate it. I love it. Yeah, and, and tell so your wife. Really uh, how how much how much did you do? How much uh, uh, of interior work did you do? I think it's pretty balanced. Okay, okay, that's cool. We have a good relationship. We have a good balance. That's relationship. good. That's good to hear. So yeah, so. <laughs> but I love the stuff that you have. Give her a shout out for doing good work, uh, like putting all this cool stuff up. <laughs> she's in the other. Room. She's in the other room. I'll, I'll tell her. <laughs> and uh, oh, I just I forgot about the mirror. What, what's the mirror all about? Like, what, what what stuff is that? That's another. I don't know the history of that. That's another one that my wife okay. had. Yeah, it's a uh, um, just an old mirror that I love. Mm. Like an old kind of deco style mirror. Yeah. Okay. Cool. It, it's like anytime you kind of look at look in it to kind of bud to your hair yeah. or get some out of your teeth, you you automatically have this wonderful design uh -huh. under you. Like you're your own movie poster. Oh, that, that's you, right. It yeah. seems like. They're kind of reminiscent of kind of some shapes that Greg Ruth or Matt Taylor would use, yeah, you know? Yeah, like, yeah, you're you know, right. I feel like, I feel like they'd be down with those shapes, mm. you know? <laughs> Perfect. I can't wait to show them that. And, and you can see uh, the guitars in the background. Are you playing or your wife? Uh, oh, yeah. I used to play in bands a lot okay. when I was in San Francisco. What, what kind of music? Or one band. Um, I used to... Uh, oh, there she is. My wife is wondering... But... Yeah, I'll, I'll tell her that she did had great taste in artwork. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyways, um, yeah, so I had a band. Um, we were it was in the uh, early two thousands, late nineties. Mm -hmm. It was kind of like kind of soundscapey, I would say. Okay. And we were really inspired by like uh, tortoise and seeing cake and mm -hmm. um, you know. Did Did you do what? Yeah. Did you record an album and did Did you do the the, the cover? No, you know what? Well, we were all artists, so we okay. um, we ha we did one album that we I think we only did a hundred copies of or whatever. It was like a vinyl, yeah. a red vinyl, and my friend uh, Paul did the cover for it. He he did screen. He used to do a lot of screen mm -hmm. printing, so he did the screen print of uh, our dog Steve. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's basically what was what was the band called? It's called Sounds of the Barbary Coast. Sounds of the Barbary Coast. Okay, I could have. And then we got. Yeah, I, I could have imagined it would be it would have been an artist uh, uh, artist doing art or artist being artist or something like that. That's kind of what the sounds of the Barbie Coast is all about. Okay, cool, cool, cool. And then, but and then we did a uh, we did a show with uh, this band Lightning Bolt came to town. Mm -hmm. um, it was our first time seeing Lightning Bolt, and they're insane. A two two person band that was like incre incredibly noisy and wonderful and huge sound. And then I I felt like the noise kind of the noise scene kind of started 
erupting in San Francisco. And we became noisy and we changed our name to Nam and we became very, uh, very noisy and hard to listen to. <laughs> okay. And then, and then, and then we became soulful, we became soul band. <laughs> um, and that was, that was the life of it. And I haven't played for a while. But, but, but did you do, did you just play the guitar or did you, uh, basically, uh, did you do vocals or how, what was it? Uh, I, I played guitar in San Barbie coast. And then when we turned into Nam, I, uh, played the organ, which the I don't organ. play. Okay. How, how did that turn out? <laughs> no, noisy because really I wanted to play, I wanted to play soul music on the, the organ, but then we became mm -hmm. noisy. So it was just kind of making noise. And then we were all doing vocals at that time yeah. and wearing our outfits. We had costumes that we wore. <laughs> okay. Uh, but then, um, but then, uh, when we started getting soulful, I wanted to try to play, uh, play organ but I, I never it kind of fell apart at that time okay i see i see how it is um okay last question basically to your house what does your workplace look like is there like do you have a certain setup or do you how which way do you like to work um well i have my at my studio is where i usually do my work mm -hmm. and that's where i have my my cintiq set up and my um my table where i paint with the um, watercolors and I have my big uh, flat file for my art mm -hmm. in it and everything. And I share it with a bunch of other artists um, that do a variety of different things. Some people do videos, some people like um, do movies and things like that. So some people just program kind of experiences. Mm -hmm. So it's a really inspiring place to be. I kind of miss it quite a lot. But being home, we my, my wife and I both work at this dining room table, mm, okay. uh, which is like this, this old, you can't see it, but it's just... Mm big wooden simple table and so in five days a week because we have or because since we're freelancers or i'm freelancer i have to i make sure to do like kind of like nine to five style and then have weekends off so i'll set up my cintiq here and if i need to paint with watercolors i'll send set them up and then take them down on friday like that's so i put it all away so mm -hmm. it would be nice to have but we don't necessarily have an office office here so um during this time, um, it's just like a very like mobile kind of setup. You know, I yeah, set yeah, it yeah. up on Monday and kind of do everything that I need to do all through the week, and it stays here. And then by Friday, I put it all away and don't think about it, sort of thing. But yeah, this, yeah. this that's basically what I what I use. So I, like I have like the arm and everything here, so I can basically push everything aside if I don't want it anymore, and like turn off the lights and put them down. So that's like, uh, but. That's basically my studio here, my my three uh, screens and like all the lights and like the microphone and the camera set up. So I was like, yeah, I, I know the feeling. You're rubbing in the three screens. Damn. It's, well, I got two screens. I mean, I mean, I thought I didn't need it, but I actually do. I actually do like on two screens. I do, um, for example, the um, I do like the video editing and everything. And on the third one. I have to, I have to pull up all the information and stuff like that and like the the order so it's like helps me to to balance it out and I for, first of all I only had two but three screens is like the way better solution in, in my opinion right now and especially when I do like all this like these interviews I have like all, I use all all three screens right now so it's like crazy maybe I need five screens I maybe. might need five screens what do you think of that maybe I'll it'll be slightly better set up than you it's it's okay screens. there's there's no better you have to work with it <laughs> I want an email screen I want a picture screen I want a music <laughs> screen I want my whatever I'm painting screen yeah yeah no, it, it, I mean working with uh I, I mean my Cintiq is much smaller at home so mm -hmm. it's like that part of the setup is kind of a bummer but like I do miss having my big Cintiq that I can draw on yeah and, I bet but, I bet um, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna circle back to to your hardware later. Um, but right now, I okay. want to talk about your work. How do you? Um, is there anything you're working on right now, and you can talk about it? Because like most of the time, when I talk to artists, they all have, no, I can't say anything because it's still NDA and licensed and not licensed and so on and so on. <laughs> well, the only thing, okay, so like the ongoing things I'm doing is like I'm, I'm working on uh, we're doing a sequel to one of our games called Psychonauts. Mm -hmm. We're doing it's called Psychonauts 2 where I'm doing designs and, and things for that game and that's closing in on the end. So I do, I do that like on my Cintiq and things mm -hmm. and just draw paper. Um, and then I'm finishing a book pitch uh, for a comic book called Eaglehead and Treehead that I'm trying to finish up, which is another thing I'm working on. But, but the main thing I'm trying to focus on right now is um so san diego comic-con is in july mm -hmm. usually but we yeah um, they cancel 
canceled it, obviously. Um, but I want to have, I still want to have like a virtual experience. Yeah. I want to have, I, I want to do things. Yeah. I want to do something for those five days. So I want to have, I'm going to have releases every day during those, that five day period mm -hmm. and then do online kind of activities and like zoom hangouts so we could draw together and do fun things. It was just something I did during the, um, the, ex the exhibition mm -hmm. and stuff. And I know that there's other artists like Alex Pardi and people yeah. that are kind of getting together and they're doing things. So we might have some crossover things. So it could still be That's a cool. real fun experience for everyone um, to have from wherever they are in the world. So exactly. it might even be better than comic con because you won't, you won't have to travel and a lot more people can get involved. So yeah. I'm very excited about that. Yeah. And I'm trying to, and, and I'm trying to come up with um, things for, um, for prints mm -hmm. um, and, and pins and different releases. And I knew, I do know that there's one thing that I'll say is um, Bill Murray themed. Mm -hmm. That's probably one of the prints that I'm very excited about Pretty doing. Cool. Um, it'll be called the Murray's. Yeah. Um, so I'm working on that, but I don't really have anything to show necessarily. And, and uh, uh, um, did, did, you, did you ever hear of uh, SofaCon? Have you heard of yeah, that? Yeah, that was I was yeah, that was something that uh, Mike Mitchell got going. Yeah, exactly. I did that last year. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, so basically, yeah, what, what you do gonna what you're gonna do for comic for the Comic Con? Uh, it's gonna be like basically a sofa con, and I really enjoy that they put everything into like a virtual perspective and basically everything for free. So this is one of the chances that I have to go to a Comic Con. It's a San Diego Comic Con in, in this case um, to actually experience it in a way. That that's kind of cool to see. One of the things I liked about SofaCon, which I think I think they can we can improve the next time we do SofaCon, is is like, like I know that we had like the way they did SofaCon is like I'm I'm sure you know like they had the scheduled little slots of time for every artist mm -hmm. so you can go do it. But I, what I love about the concept of it is that like there should be things happening all the time. Like kind of when you're at a Comic Con, there's different panels you can go to. You mm -hmm. can wander into each each room and like oh I'm bored of this, I'm gonna go into this room and watch this painting, or I'm gonna listen to this talk or this interview. Yeah. Like that's the aspect that I love about the concept of SofaCon, not just like the releases, but like things that you can kind of go and kind of feel like you're virtually hanging out at this show together. So I'm hoping that there's a lot more crossover like that the next SofaCon. And if we could do that for San Diego Comic-Con one, that'd be great too. So I'm going to have some chats with Alex soon and then we'll figure out yeah. maybe how we can. And it so. sounds perfect. I mean, um, uh, maybe I have to talk to Mike Mitchell and maybe like get because, like, I, since I'm doing like this video kind of podcast, I could definitely maybe do like a talk or something if they want to have me or yeah. something like that. So that would be cool to do something. You should, dude, you should definitely talk to Mike about yeah. that. Yeah, that would be something like even if like every if like if every day if that you had a couple moments that you had some mm -hmm. interviews and people could just constantly it'd be a lot of work for you yeah. but it would be but i mean wonderful i mean i it. basically edit this whole thing live i could stream it live on youtube that's that's not a big deal so i think you should do it you should reach out all to right him. i'll put in a good I, I will do i will i will talk to him and see see what's going on if we can get something going and uh yeah and if you if there's something for the comic con thing i could do i'm always also happy to like help you guys out Idea. <laughs> putting putting my plug here a little bit <laughs> okay all right, good. All right. No. um back to your art uh so this is the projects you try to talk about and um how do you go uh, about for your your uh, own project how do you come from basically um get the idea and then try to make it happen how how, how do you approach that um well i have um it always starts with like if there's a theme, if there's a movie that I'm thinking about, like, or that I want to do or a character or something, I'll start out with like a lot of reference. Like I'll go in and I'll pull, like I'll get really addicted to just pulling as much reference as I can about the movie or the characters or whatever. And just, just surround myself with as much of that as I can to, in order to kind of, cause yeah, I, cause you never, you're never quite sure where, what inspiration might come from, whatever the images are and whatever pieces mm -hmm. you might have. And if there are other, other things that uh, you think about that aren't even about the movie or about the thing that you want to pull, like there's an atmosphere or something like that, mm -hmm. um, then start pulling things like that. Um, and then just surround yourself with all those things. And then, um, like for example, I did this one piece called uh, Five Points Experience, which is was for a Martin Scorsese-themed yeah. um, show. And that was something where I wanted to do something from uh, – from the uh, Gangs in New York. Yeah, film. did you send and, me that and, or? Uh, oh, I did. I did send that, it there. Actually. I'm, I'm, but yeah, um, I'm looking for it right now, where it was, so I can uh, show it to everybody. Do you know which uh, which folder it was you sent me? Uh, oh, there it is. I found, it. I found it. I found it. I got it. Perfect. Okay. Sorry. 
So, so the whole point, the the whole feeling that I was thinking about with, with that was like, it was like, I, I loved that spe- specific scene mm-hmm. of the snow scene. So I knew I wanted to do a brawl scene like that. So it was like kind of pulling as much of that um, as I could, like like shots from the movie, doing screenshots and moments like that. But also I was thinking, really thinking of like the, like old Bruegel paintings, you know, mm-hmm. and like Hans Bosch paintings where a lot of things are happening. Yeah. And it's like a slice of life of of the medieval times or whatever. So I pulled a lot of like uh, Bruegel paintings and stuff as well. So it's just like anything that kind of might kind of inspire with like what that thing is. Um, and so I pull, I spent a lot of time doing that first and then, and then I'll start doing just doodles and try just doodle gags, mm-hmm. like not um, just on pieces of paper, just like no pressure, just gags, 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 like a lot of different, yeah. like I'll draw things from those moments or like I'll draw some little fights or, or draw whatever, even little thumbnails. Maybe I'll make lists with words and ideas and stuff. So it's just like a real stream of consciousness just to like not stress myself out and let myself kind of flow through with it. Mm-hmm. And then I'll have just a huge mess of stuff to kind of sift through. It could, and then some of those things will kind of lead to other things and I'll start drawing ideas from those. And then um, and then eventually when I kind of come up with what I want it to be, then I'll scan all that stuff in the computer and then I'll start piecing it together like a jigsaw puzzle mm-hmm. sort of thing. So so usually like the compositions will be very small thumbnails. Um that I'll kind of blow up in yeah. in Photoshop, and then I'll just kind of start plugging in the gags, plugging in all the characters, okay. um, piece it together like a puzzle in Photoshop, and then add what I can add or feel like adding and stuff. And then uh, and then once once that's feeling good, um, then I'll print it out and start painting and mm-hmm. stuff. And that's when I'm and I'm using my brain all through that. So I'm listening usually listening to some real repetitive electronic music during all this <laughs> okay. or I'm at a cafe. I like to work in cafes where there's or coffee shops where um, there's a lot of people doing other things. Yeah. So it's like the white noise of things kind of, that I don't have to focus on that kind of helps me relax. Um, and then, but then once I start, and even when I start the painting and I start have to choose colors, that's a particularly stressful moment mm-hmm. for me, like choosing what the color schemes are. So I'll paint them really, really small color combinations to try to figure that out. Um, but then once I start painting everything, uh, um, onto the paper, um, that's when I can just relax and just listen to a podcast, mm-hmm. um, and listen to some unspool or something, <laughs> and then uh, kind of cruise on or, or some sort of crime podcast. Yeah, that's cool. Um, and then and then I'll just sort of finish up like that. So that's usually how it works for me. Okay, and um, how, how much time do you plan in for a, a project? Like, is there a certain amount, or is this maybe sometime? Hey, I got a little artist block in some sort of way, or how, how's that? Well, I definitely get artist block for sure. And there's always a point. There's always a point. Usually, um, halfway through the painting, like I would say, the painting takes about let's say, I would say the middle section of painting. Painting is when I start getting really depressed about it, and then I basically am just trying to salvage it. Every single painting, I feel like I have to try to salvage, and then at the end, it, it mm-hmm. feels good, and I pop quits. So. That's kind of when I start feeling kind of frustrated, but um, but for the most part, uh, it really varies on what it is. You know what the painting is. If there's a lot of characters, it usually takes like a, a few weeks to like a month or something. Mm-hmm. Um, and and then uh, if there's ever writer's block, it's funny because whenever I get writer's block, it, I get really um, if I if I can't figure out the concept yeah. or if something, nothing's not nothing's working, I get really sleepy for some reason. Um, I get really like kind of like I just feel like I want to go to sleep, which is amazing to me because I, I recently heard that like Taika Waititi also suffers from that. Yeah. Like there's all these shots of him when he's like on set taking naps all the time because when he gets stressed oh, out, or okay, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. He, he falls asleep. And I was like so thankful to see that because there's something about I don't know. There's a quitter attitude that like or prote- mm-hmm. like a defensive mechanism that my yeah. body and my mind is trying to do where I'm like like hey hey hey, hey don't get stressed don't get stressed just go to sleep. You know, don't get stressed about it. Just take a break. Go to sleep. Mm. It's like it's almost like my body's quitting yeah. or something like that. So that's that's when I get um, that's when I suffer a writer's block. That's usually when I do it, and I have to go for walks or something to kind of loosen up, mm-hmm. you know. And you know, because if I get really wound up, I know that when I get to that point, and I start getting sleepy. I'm like, okay, <laughs> I can't work right now. If I'm getting sleepy, it means I'm failing. I need okay. to take a break. I I mean, uh, you got you got to figure out how you work and how everything works for you. So that's uh, if that's your way, it's uh, totally fine. Um, yeah. Okay. And how how do you like your uh, all your artwork to come out? Is is there maybe do, 
is there a way like the screen printed more? Is, is that more a way for you or like a G clay or something like that? Well, G clay is usually how I've been doing it um, thus far. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's usually, it looks like actual watercolor painting, which I like a lot. Mm -hmm. But the Star Wars one was the first time I didn't think it was possible to do screen print. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I was blown away by, by it. So, and, and the fact that you can do so much larger and, like, so I'm very excited to do who that. Did this, uh, who did the separations for it? God, I forget. I forget the names. I should have okay. written it down. That's what, that's what I wondered I because I actually talked uh, yesterday. I talked to Matt Griffin for the release episode and he did a June piece. Like he did the hardcover book, um, which was licensed by the Herbert uh, estate and stuff like that. And uh, he did he did that and some uh, like like in the front, some artwork and in the back, some artwork. And uh, bottleneck release it as a as a print to cover, and he said, "Oh, nobody, no, no, nobody can do uh, the the separations for that for like for the screen printing." And then basically, uh, he's from from is Ireland, I think Ireland, and um, then he the Matt Ferguson. He asked Matt Ferguson, and Matt Ferguson is like a separation ninja. He like he knows he knows the stuff. He just basically looked at it. He said, and then it's like, uh, "Oh yeah, okay, yeah, I can do that." That's easy. It's gonna take ten minutes or something or something like that. But like, uh, like super fast. And uh, he he gave me a, a, a gif to like look at it and um, see how the separations were done. It's like it's it's like magic. I don't I don't know. I, I wonder how how this works. Well, I knew that like because Mondo has it's whoever they work with. They work with some real geniuses yeah. there. But I knew that like the, when they do Edmondson stuff mm -hmm. because Edmondson stuff is so painterly. Yeah. Like uh, if if they can do. Edmonds and stuff they could probably figure out and they did they could mm. they figured out how to do the watercolor look but i gotta say man i really like and I, this is something i would i would like to try to really um embrace the kind of like kind of uh screen printing mm -hmm. style with like a limited palette and kind of try to do yeah. that like, i would i would like to kind of do posters like in that vein because i feel like um it's one th i mean trying to reproduce watercolor is cool it, i mean it's it's fine but like, i would like to like use that medium as how it should be used for the color separation yeah. as, as a fun kind of some displacement things and kind of you know because to be honest like when i look at like chris turnham's stuff i just love it because i think like, i see how they interact in a way that is really fun mm -hmm. to see how his call his layers do it and he and he has his little animations of his and he only does he, has, he just does it by hand yeah. like you know anywhere from five to seven layers or something like that and you could and you see the breakdown it's really so yeah. interesting to me, but my brain doesn't work like that. <laughs> I need, I need help. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I totally understand. It's like a totally complex thing. I, I, I tried to uh, do for friends. They had like a documentary going and I made like a, uh, like a vector graphic poster for that. And like basically my first try and it's like, I don't know, it, it took forever and was like, <laughs> it, it was probably not that good, but I think it was okay. But then the, my friends really enjoyed it. So uh, I'm, I was fine with that. Mm. Yeah, and another question would be uh, on what kind of paper do you like this stuff come out? Because like this, for example, when they do the screen prints, they have like those like foil kind of thing, those rainbow foil stuff, which is like really cool and makes like think look the art like in a different way. And or uh, is it or is it are you gonna stick only to like a certain kind of paper? No, I'd love to do. I mean, I most of my G clays are through static medium. That's mm -hmm. when I do my G, my G clays, and and there's usually there's a textured paper that I like because I like when because I work on I paint on kind of rougher, kind of watercolor paper like, mm -hmm. uh, was it arches or barking bird or something, mm -hmm. um, but uh, so I like the texture and, and and I like when the the printing is kind of on a similar type of paper. So I don't know what kind of paper they use, but okay, um, yeah. but it looks really nice. Um, so I like a little bit more texture in my stuff, but um, I'm I'm also into you know trying new things out so who knows <laughs> okay. oh, maybe i'll try foil maybe i'll try some gold on there some glow in the dark i'd love to do some glow in the dark stuff yeah oh that's right i have um um i mean the the in the back you can see the spirited away which is foil and also the mysterio which like reflects the screen now but uh in the, in the back that it's also foil and um uh, and I have a I have a blade uh, uh, like the blade first movie. I have a glow in the dark, which is like really cool. It's like it looks very awesome. I can tell you, dude. The first the first toy that we put out with DKE, um, the first toy was a was a Ghostbuster showdown. It was yeah. Bill Murray versus Slimer, mm -hmm. and they used a glow in the dark material oh, for Slimer. Nice. That's dude. that's the way to go. I mean, come on, <laughs> can't go wrong with that. Perfect. Can't go. 
and go on with it as well. Okay, um, for the future, is there any IP or any idea you want to work on? Some Maybe some uh, older movie stuff, some newer movie stuff, music, sports? Um, oh, man. Well, I think the only... Yeah, I don't... I, I guess the, the, the show that I was really excited about is Dark on Netflix. Oh, that, the, the I mean, German I, show. Dude, it's so good, that show. <laughs> it's going like to continue. It? End, of, end of July. Yeah, that's the last season, though, I think, right? Yeah, uh, and I, yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. Um, I, I actually okay. went to a couple of filming locations that they're, they're basically around here where I live. So. Oh, my gosh. I'm excited. <laughs> I had to tell Megan about it. But yeah, yeah, she, um, yeah we love that show. I love it. I, I think it's so smart. I think it's a... Do, do, do they have English dubbing for it? or? How, how... They do, but like my friend Paul, who was in that band with, introduced me to Dark. Yeah. And he's like, you got to watch it. The dubbing is fine. Um, but the dubbing is not very good. Like okay. I like, I never am a huge fan of dubbing, but like, yeah, yeah, me neither. But, he, but he loves the dubbing. I think he just doesn't like reading as much, mm. but, um, but yeah, some people like the dubbing, some people don't, but I just, I love good old self titled <laughs> dub. It, I blown away by it. So I think that's something I'd like to do something with. Cause I just, okay, cool. That yeah, show blew me away. I, I actually saw a couple uh, alternative movie posters today about dark. I think there were two or three. They somebody posted today so yeah but yeah get into really? it i'm, I'm excited about it it should be way more popular than it is i think it's it, but i think it it's very it. popular i think it is i don't know i want it to be more though i want it to be more okay. popular it's okay not popular enough let's let's do it let's make it happen scott come on <laughs> we can do it okay I do it on the German end and uh, maybe we can talk to the cast and uh, have it uh, have them sign stuff because i mean that's right Oh my god! Yeah, why don't you become friends with the cast so that I can yeah. meet them, and then we can do something together with them. All right, perfect. I'll I'll, I'll hook it up. <laughs> okay, thank you, man. This is gonna be exciting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Um. Yeah. But uh, what? Uh, Dark. Is, is there anything else you want to work on, or? Um... Oh man. Uh... Do you want to do Scott C baseball cards <laughs> to give your dad? Oh, you, you know what I want to do actually is. Uh... Well, you know what the, the baseball card thing that that's kind of what i think with with uh that's kind of always what i wanted with the uh uh the great showdowns release okay because every every month we put out like three or four new great showdowns mm. so there's probably like they're, they're little little you know little prints that yeah. are uh by now i don't even know how many there are but now they're kind of like baseball cards and, and i love seeing people like trading them and i think even people were, when people were at the exhibition they were kind of trading those and kind of so that's the kind of yeah. I, I like the idea of, of people having a collection and they have a binder with all their showdowns like that makes me so happy so the concept <laughs> of because i didn't obviously didn't collect baseball cards but mm -hmm. i not obviously but i already mentioned it but um i did collect garbage pail kids well Star there you Wars go cards. So there you go. I was a collector of cards for sure. So, but I would like to do cards. I do like the idea of it, and I would like to do more of those sorts of things. And I would like to actually get into board games. I want to. Mm -hmm. I want to create some games. And there's one that I've been working on with my friends in Alaska um, that could be that's really fun so far. So that that's something I want to do. Mm -hmm. And also, I really want to do more puzzles, especially now that everyone's at home a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I mean, I've always loved puzzles. Always where, loved puzzles. where did this come from? I mean, there was, there was, they released so many puzzles. All like they had like the Star Star Wars puzzle. They had the Jurassic Park one. They had the mm -hmm. Pawnee uh, uh, Englert one. It's like it's like crazy. I don't know where where does it come from. <laughs> well, yeah, no, it was perfectly placed. The fact that they got those puzzles going, yeah, Mario right? did at the same time. I wish that I, I got my act together to get puzzles out right now, but or before everything went down. But I. I mean, I grew up loving puzzles and just like, I especially like the puzzles where, like I had this one Marvel superheroes puzzle that mm -hmm. had a bunch of like all the characters in Marvel, like on one yeah. puzzle. And I, yeah. I would do it all the time. And I just loved, <laughs> I loved it because each puzzle piece had a different character on it. And I loved just thinking about those spots and thinking about where I'd want to hang out in that group and things. So that's like making some of my posters that like have a lot of characters in it. It's yeah. just always been my dream to put a bunch of puzzles out like that. So. Yeah, That's I mean, I mean, you have a lot of like posters that include so many characters. I mean, for example, the Far Far uh, uh, Galaxy Away one, uh, that that could be very cool puzzle. Puzzle, and if you do like maybe oh, like the like certain characters, like the main characters, as a special a special puzzle piece, that would be awesome. 
oh, what do you mean? You mean like a special puzzle piece? Yeah, like that the, the basically Luke Skywalker is a, like just one piece, for example. Oh, like his shape or something? Yeah, exactly, like exactly. Oh, interesting idea. Uh, 10%, 10%. <laughs> interesting idea. Well, I did, I've only done one puzzle in my life. It was a yeah. long time ago. It was like this, it was a wooden puzzle for artifact puzzles. That's yeah. the company. And it was a it was a scene a battle scene of a bunch of knights um, going to battle medieval style tapestry yeah. and then a bunch of orchestra people kind of playing orchestra mm. with them almost like the epic music was happening during yeah. and and they had specific puzzle pieces that that I was able to design okay like, cool like violin or like yeah. weapons or different characters that you, yeah but that but it wasn't the actual piece cut out like from the thing it was just anyways I think your idea is. Uh, cool, I know yeah, and that's that's something we can work with. <laughs> okay. Right. Okay. Um, so now I want to turn to one of my favorite questions. I, I uh, it's, it's it's a hit or miss question though, but um, I always ask it because uh, there's some interesting stuff is going to come out, and uh, the question is, which classical artist would you like to see make a film poster? We. Oh yeah. I did I cuz you did I think you didn't send me anything on that or did did you I cuz I I did cuz I have an, I I do think I would like I would like to see um I like to see Paul Clay do a uh oh, Star Wars poster. Paul Clay uh, yeah oh I I I wonder how that would look like. Would it Yeah, like, I'd love to see it. Which which uh, do you have a piece in mind that you um that you would like pick like of of his work or obviously? Yeah. Um I don't know. Like, uh, I mean, I really love like, like there's a the little guy in a boat when the, in the in the uh, water is like uh, almost like a grid pattern. Yeah. I just love. Yeah, I I, I would love to see him break down <laughs> some of those famous characters in his style. It would be really fun to see. Yeah, I bet. I bet. Uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, Star Wars. Yeah, I think like with like but the with the stars and like uh like the different characters i think that could be and the, the the shapes of the um of the spaceships and stuff like that i think they could work mm -hmm. very well i just love to see him draw any of the things that <laughs> uh, like any pop culture things it'd be fun to watch him try okay. to draw it that's very cool i, I really enjoyed it enjoyed it the, um the, the the choice you made um a lot of people said before they said uh, cavaggio for example Cavaggio. Cavaggio doing like a, um, uh, 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 what's it called? Uh, uh, MCU movie, like like the superhero types, because like the the way hmm. he structures his paintings, it's like very uh, super crazy uh, with the lighting and like this like very, um, uh, very much like superhero type stuff he did. Like, okay, yeah, I mean that's more appropriate. That 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 matchup would be good. Yeah. yeah. See, I would love to see Paul Clay do a Marvel poster. Yep. Let's do it. <laughs> let's do it. Let's let's maybe like um what was his name? B B Betrachi? B the the famous uh, the famous guy who like uh, who like basically could fake any painting and nobody could tell for a long time. Oh yeah. There was a movie. Was there a documentary yeah. on that guy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's a documentary, but I don't know where it was, but I, I saw it somewhere. It's a documentary on that. And um yeah, maybe maybe he can do it in the style if he's still alive. I, I'm not sure. <laughs> Let's reach out to that guy. Exactly. <laughs> okay. Um, or, or there's another way. Did you mm. hear about this um, robot, who, or this AI basically, this art AI, which like I th it was in the Netherlands, I think they programmed uh, all like Rembrandt uh, paintings into into the, the AI, and the AI could basically uh, you could pick something, and the AI would make a, a new painting. Which is not the same, but a new painting, but the style and everything would look perfectly like Rembrandt. It, you, you mm. nobody could mm. really tell. It's like very close. Wow. I'm so into I'll look into that. yeah, maybe we need to feed that AI and uh, have some older artists do like movie posters. <laughs> that would that that would be cool to feed in a bunch yeah. of like exactly. uh, art by that artist and then a bunch of like movie posters of that one genre yeah. and see what comes out. That's yeah. Seems very possible. A, a Drew, Drew Struz and Paul Clay connection. <laughs> Put those two together. Yeah, yeah sure. <laughs> I'm into it. it. All righty. Um, okay. Um, almost last question. 
okay. or or talking point, let's say. Um, do you have any tips for beginners out there? Is there any hardware that or uh, that that they should use? Is there any software that they should use? Any other utensils you really like or yeah? Well, I mean, I'm not as like uh, I'm probably not the person to ask as far as like. Um, digital supplies, you know, like, I mean, because I still don't really know how to use Pro Procreate or anything mm. like that. Like, I would love to learn how to use those things. Um, but I still have much to learn on, on that stuff. Mm. Uh, but, uh, and I, I guess, I mean, whatever you, whatever medium and styles is, I feel like it's not as important. You, you do what you love and stuff. But um, I think I would say um, keep, keeping motivated, especially when you're not in school and you don't have assignments, uh, yeah. is tough. Like that was the toughest thing for me. So like the whole idea of giving yourself goals and giving yourself like having a, a reason to create something, whether it's like having an Instagram account and like, okay, I'm going to post once a day or, um, a few times a week or something like that. Like having a goal like that, you know, for, or, or for us, it was creating comics for comic conventions, like, um, like creating deadlines for yourself and giving yourself projects is, is difficult. And that's something that like, um, that's an important thing to do. And, um, and sometimes, uh, doing it with a group of people like a community is, is easier where you can motivate each other. Mm -hmm. So I feel like that's an important thing, but also I would say like people stress out about style so much, like, Oh man, how do I develop a style? When do I, my style going to come out? But I definitely not worry about that as much. I would just do what's fun and look at what's inspiring to you and keep on taking in culture, whatever it is that you kind of like to mm -hmm. take in and, and just um, your style will develop on its own. And then one day you'll be like, whoa, this is a wonderful kind of new thing that I'm kind of doing, you know? Because I think people just like stress about that too much and, mm. and lose kind of sight of just why they're doing it and how much fun it is. So okay. I guess that's what I would say. And um, how, how, is there any social media strategy you use or you? Social media strategy? Let's see. Well, <laughs> I, I, post on, I post on Instagram. And I don't, I'm in Twitter. I don't just don't use it as much, but Instagram mm -hmm. is the place where I find inspiration and I post most. Um, and I also use, uh, Twitch and, uh, YouTube to post, uh, to, to do live hangouts. And okay, cool. Like mm -hmm. But I feel like those are, which I, which I'm still learning about because I've only done Twitch a little bit and I know it's mostly video game centered. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, but just any platform to encourage like kind of the community interaction and stuff yeah. is important. But I think, Instagram is, is pretty good right now. I used to use, I mean, Great Showdowns was built on uh, that website, Great Showdowns, okay. that I post them, is built on Tumblr. Mm -hmm. um, Tumblr is, isn't, I don't spend as much time on Tumblr as I used to, yeah. unfortunately. Uh, is but, anybody um, spending time there anymore? I think it's, I think it's gone. Sad. It's too bad. It's too bad. But that's, but that, but anything that has a built-in community that things can kind of travel a lot. Mm. You know? And I think Instagram people can do that. And I've learned, I've personally been exposed to so many artists on Instagram on the stories and things that people repost and, so, and mm -hmm. I like to repost artists that I love and that mm -hmm. I, I learn about. So yeah. things can travel like wildfire on there. So, and it happens on Twitter and stuff too, but I think Instagram is, is yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. a good spot to be. Okay. Um, we have also some, uh, uh, some user asked some question. It was Richard Porter from the Facebook group. Um, oh, okay. first, first thing is, uh, have you ever seen a film that you have done for the showdown? Or like every film. Oh, have I seen every film yeah. I've done a showdown for? Yeah. I'd like to say yes, but a few I skimmed. <laughs> okay. Because I know okay. that there's a cultural relevance to them that I kind of skimmed. I've seen most of them. Okay. And it's, I feel like that's something that's funny because people are like, man, when they look at the show and it's like, yeah, you've seen so many movies. But <laughs> yeah. I, I really do think that if you think about, if you listed every movie that you've seen in your lifetime, Mm -hmm. It'd be an enormous list. It'd be thousands upon yeah, yeah. thousands of movies. I like did. Everyone has seen thousands and thousands of movies. Yeah, I actually. It's not, that, not that crazy. I'm sorry. I actually did a couple of years back. I did like a, there was like this thing that uh, that could uh, calculate how many time or how, how much time you spend in front of the TV, but it was just TV shows. So you could basically put in uh, like every TV show and how many seasons you have watched it. And they like calculated the minutes by it. And uh, I, at some point, I, was, I think it was 10 years ago or so when I did it. And I was like, I stopped after I had like a year full of TV shows I watched. So it was like constant. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Dude, I, one of the things I love about, <laughs> about my dad is he has a, uh, he has a binder that he keeps next to the TV. He watches yeah. a lot of movies. He has a binder 
that he, with all the movies that he's ever watched listed in it, mm-hmm. because he oftentimes forgets what movie he's watched. Yeah. And so he'll start watching it, and then halfway through, he's like, oh, I've already seen this. Oh, and he'll get mad. Yeah. Uh, that he's already seen it. He's <laughs> wasted his time. So he, like, will add, he'll keep adding to it. And it's like printed out, and he's yeah. alphabetized, but he'll keep adding with pencil, and then he'll go and he'll update it, and he'll import those, and then he'll but, print out new printouts. Like, it's, it's so But is he, is he never what, a re- re-watching a movie? Oh, he's definitely. That's the okay. problem. He, he'll rewatch it. No, no. But that's the thing. He doesn't want to rewatch it. Like, yeah. Okay. 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 It. He likes because there's so many new movies. It's like yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, like I, I used I, I you know, what? I used to rewatch movies a lot more when I was younger. I felt like yeah. I would watch the same movie like hundreds of times. But now it's like there's so many movies I want to see. I rarely want to watch them again. But like with my wife and I, we like well, it, there's a movie that she'll want to watch that I've seen and and like. I, I want her to experience it with her, and vice versa. So, like, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, I know. you want to watch it again, you know? But for the most part, <laughs> I don't like watching the same movie over and over again. Okay, yeah. As you said, it's like super tough, like with all the new stuff coming out, and especially like I, since I do all the reviews, I, I there's no time to rewatch a movie at some at some point, or at least not the whole movie. I basically just skip to my favorite scenes and stuff when I, uh, when I just have the time to like rewatch something, but. Uh, like mm-hmm. Corona, I basically watched everything that came out, and it's like I don't know, it's like it's like crazy. Yeah, you want to watch the things that make you happy. I'm reading this book right now called um, "Wild and Crazy Guys" by mm-hmm. Nick uh, Kasemian. It's it's about all those Silent Live guys, like uh, mm-hmm. Steve Martin and Dan Aykroyd yeah. and Murphy and stuff. And I just finished the Ghostbusters chapter, and his and, and Dan Aykroyd's favorite part of the movie is all of the Rick Moranis scenes, mm-hmm. and I think that those are some of my favorite spots. And he just wants to just have all the Merc Moranis scenes like on a loop that you can just watch every oh, day. Oh, okay. I, yeah. Just to, to take in, like, that's... The, sometimes the, that's all I need. The Rick Moranis cut. <laughs> yeah, the Rick Moranis cut. Yeah. Oh, my God. There's got to there's gotta be that cut on uh, YouTube somewhere. Yeah, probably somebody did that. Yeah, that's uh, it's, uh, for, for somebody. Dude, dude, how do you like it that he's back? Like, doing movies again? Um, I, Is he? I didn't know that. He is back. He's, uh, he had, back? His wife was sick for a long time. I think she died. Oh. Or something like that but um yeah. and yeah and that's why he didn't do movies anymore for a long time but now he's back for uh, honey i shrunk the kids movie again there's a new oh, one coming yeah. i yeah. did hear that i did right well, so, good for him I love okay <laughs> um yeah and the, the another question he had was uh, are you going to do some uh, european exhibitions or comic cons in the future i don't know if that's uh, the comic con ones based also on the european one but uh, definitely exhibitions european yeah, oh, definitely. Yeah, I would love to, for sure. The last one I went to, I went to a picture book kind of convention in Paris mm-hmm. uh, a few years ago. Um, I would love to go, and I went to the one in uh, Angoulême. I would love to go back to Angoulême. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, any any chance that I get to go to any other 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 places for that stuff. There's there's a one in, um, is it Norway? I forget. I'm not going to know the details. So, mm-hmm. basically, <laughs> yes, I would like to. I would Perfect. Like to. Okay. Yeah, and, we... when my, and when my friends get that um, museum going, the Art Ludic in Paris, I'll probably come out for that opening. Perfect. Too. Then if that is if that's gonna happen, then uh, let you get over to, to Germany as well. Let's 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 do something then. Um, they have also yeah. a great comic book scene uh, and like a comic book uh, companies to here that ba- uh, that are based out of uh, Berlin. And yeah, I think you would really enjoy it doing stuff. Please, with... maybe ask uh, get the word out. And uh, I mean, anybody invites me to of course. Something. I don't even know it exists. So yeah, I'll, I, I'm, I'll you know, we're, we're trying and uh, something is going to happen. We're going to make that happen. <laughs> I'm very thankful for you. Okay. Um, the last talking point is all about you. Um, is there any artist you uh, want to shout out? Um, you know, like say that inspired you to do this hobby so far or any other people that you want to say something about? Um, yeah, just feel free to shout somebody out. Um, I'll shout out, you know, okay, you know who I want to shout out is there's, there's my favorite um, picture book illustrator right now is this, um, his name is Christian Robinson. Mm-hmm. Um, he just had um, a book he released called You Matter, and it's a wonderful book, but his, his, his artwork is beautiful, wonderful, like I just love it so much, but he also has this, this show that he started, I, I feel like he started at the beginning of the lockdown called Making Space. Mm-hmm. Um, where he kind of he he deals with a certain feeling or certain emotion each episode, and he does and he can um, 
mostly for kids, but it could be for anybody because you basically it's like craft time and he'll mm-hmm. do craft with you and they're just the best. Like they are because I've always wanted to do like a kind of a craft show or a painting show and I still want to, yeah. but I see this one that he does and I'm just so um, excited and also jealous that he did it. It's like exactly the perfect show and I want uh, everyone to see it. I think it's it's very inspiring. I think he's very inspiring. Um, yeah. So that's that's the main shout out I want to give is to okay. Um, I, by by the way, uh, speaking of comic books and like artists doing great work, um, since you like Greg Ruth, did you did you read his first uh, book that he came uh, that he came out, uh, brought out with um, Ethan Hawke in Day? Oh no, I haven't. I have not. Okay, no. because that's I... like that's like very cool, and the the new one is coming out soon. He just published on his website. He uh, not on a website in the fan group. He I think or somewhere he published uh, Meadowlark, the new one he's doing right now. The the first kind of artwork, and it's like like it looks really cool. Cool. Well. So yeah, sure. I think I think you enjoy that. All right. Okay. Yeah. Then the last thing is. Um, Let us know where the people can find you, like Twitter, Snapchat, TikTok, uh, Tumblr, wherever they should look. You know what? I did get a TikTok. I opened it up, but I haven't. Oh my God, you did? I haven't done any of them yet, but I I want to. Okay. There's so much to deal with, but that's something I do want to get into because I like doing the videos and I I like doing the stories Mm -hmm. because on um, Instagram, well, Instagram, Twitch and uh, and Twitter and everything. It's always Scott Lava is my handle, mm-hmm. like hot lava, Scott Lava. Yeah. yeah, it's just something I've had for a long time. So that's where you can find me on on those um, platforms, whatever. And um, but my my main website is scottc.com, um, and there's also greatshowdowns.com, where you can find just the great showdowns. And then um, Scott C, the Scott C shop is where I sell all of my prints and books and pins and things like that, you know, but, um, but most of my picture books and art books and things you can probably find in bookstores and your local bookshops, which you should support those local bookshops. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Exactly. So yeah, guys out there, please support your local bookshops and try to get those Scott C stuff, uh, as well. Um, especially when you have little kids and you want to introduce them to pop culture, I think this is the way to go. Instead of like hanging up and like, uh, like a real alien poster, just go with the alien planet one. <laughs> It's got, you're going to enjoy it more and uh, the kids going to have a better time and they sleep better at night with those beautiful artworks that Scott does. And, um, <laughs> Thank you again, Scott, for stopping by. It was really uh, good talking to you. And uh, thank you to all the listeners and viewers out there. Um, And in our next episode, uh, we're going to have, I I don't even know who we're going to have. It's it's probably maybe some some shuffling around. But I think uh, Araceli Munoz. Araceli Munoz is uh, also an artist. Uh, She is going to be on for the next one. And I hope you enjoy that. And we will talk soon, guys. Bye.